All right, let Robert go. I don't give a shit. All right. Yeah, so Robert, just to say one, I mean no disrespect when I ask this question. Like, because it was something I was thinking about on how would I answer if I was a Christian, right? So, like, uh, yeah, I understand. And I think you yeah. heard the question a few times, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the first thing that comes to mind is that this, if I look, I, I mean, again, I'm, you know, to fit your, um, the thought experiment that you're proposing here, like, you're stepping into the shoes of a Christian, how would a Christian respond? So, this is my response as a Christian. Um, when I read my Bible, uh, I take into account that history is linear, like like we're talking uh, the progression of history and the progression of the way people thought psychologically. So in this sense, God also has to accommodate himself in various ways. So therefore, there's no monolithic appearance of God. Um, it's always a unique appearance. So for example, uh, if he's talking to, say, Abraham, he has to talk a Sumerian dialect. If he's talking to Moses, notice the burning bush scenario. He has to speak in some sort of Egyptian, you know, hieroglyphic sort of sense. Uh, if it's in Babylon, then you're talking about the Babylonian Akkadian language um, and Daniel and, and, you know, how God appears over there. And then finally, Jesus is the culmination uh, in in other words, a a direct incarnation into the human, the what you'd call the human species or the human body. Now, when you when you talk about God incarnating into a dog, the interesting thing is that Athanasius actually did speak about that. Um, and you you do and and the reason why he spoke about that is because in Hebrews two, you have this hypothetical. Uh, question raised, um, what if God were to incarnate into one of the angels? Well, wh what would that imply? Well, that would imply that if he did so, then the the process of salvation that would be applied to us would be applied to the angels, and then the coming, the, you know, the new heavens and the new earth, the new creation, would be given to the angels. But since God did not incarnate into any of the angels, but instead incarnated into humans, so it's the humans that will attain salvation, not the angels. And so Athanasius... Remember, Robert, that this is your religion, right? Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, yeah no, okay. so, so here's, yeah. here's my concluding point. Athanasius okay. took that and then said, well, the same would, would uh, apply to, um, you know, salvation of, say, dogs. Um, mm -hmm. if, if he incarnated into a dog, then he would have to glorify all dogs. Um, exactly. But if you're talking about worship of God, that is that is different to the question of incarnation because God does appear in theophanic form in various ways, and that's how Hebrews one starts. He he revealed himself in fragmentary ways and different ways and so on. But now, in the most complete way, was through the incarnation in Christ. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not asking if it's possible for him to incarnate in in any particular way. Right, like um, uh, I'm asking if someone came with the religion. Remember, you're seeing in a his. If you look at it through a historical lens, and then you're talking about it through, uh, you know, the biblical sense, they they come with their own religious tradition, with their own belief system, and they believe that uh, you know, dogs were created in God's image, right? Like uh, this is the glory that He bestowed upon them, and then you know, Rupert the dog took a bone from from the garden or the dog park that yeah. he wasn't allowed to take right like I, i'm i'm and i'm only saying this just to draw as much of a comparison between the two yeah right? sure yeah. um just quickly uh, so, what's just quickly what's your the, understanding of image though if a dog was made in god's image what what's you what's know to me the way that i understand it is by well i like like um like uh the ability to make choices like and remember th this is in my religious tradition of course as okay. you are as christian i i see it personally as you know having the ability to attain knowledge right um the ability to make choices between good and evil um you know to 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 be just um to forgive others uh, these are things that we share uh not only as human beings that say animals don't have right like um 
uh, you wouldn't judge an animal's morality. Uh, you can't tr test and trial an animal. Uh, we have been given this to be tested by God. And these are uh, attributes that God has as well, right? Like um, the ability to be just. Uh, we have this ability to, um, uh, you know, act in a gracious way, to be giving, to be merciful to others, to choose between right and wrong. These are attributes that we share with God, but of course, in a, in a limited way, you know, and through our uh, tests and in this life, we draw nearness to God. And also by fulfilling our duties, we can know God better. That's the way that I see it. Right? So yeah, I don't know that, the, yeah. Uh, the, the, I mean, that, that is, that is a classic, you know, traditional understanding. Well, when I say traditional, what I mean is um, post- Nicene Christian understandings of image. When I look, wow. when I look at the ancient Near East and I look at how scholars understand Selem, the the, the Hebrew for image, uh, it's interesting that the ancient Near Eastern counterparts is that it's an it, it's a, applied to idols, and in other words, the shape of an idol it doesn't have to represent an anthropomorphic shape. It it could be anything. It could be a bird. It could be even a stone. Um, but the reason why you'd call it, quote-unquote, an image is because you designate a special status to it. So, for example, this is going to sound really weird, but it, this, this, this is probably the best way to explain it. Um, my car or my bike, so, like, every man potentially has his favorite, like, car or, or his bike or, or whatever, like his favorite, say, toy. Uh and, you know, is very fond of it or becomes fond of it. And so then, um, in that sense, there's a sort of, like, association. So, for example, I don't know if you've seen in movies or, or elsewhere where they, like, say if there's, like, a plane trying to climb a certain height, and then there's that in, a, in the language, like, come on, baby, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> like, there's this, <laughs> there's this anthropomorphic, like, relationship to this thing, even though it's not alive, it's not aware. But but there's this sense of um, you're part of it, basically. Um, so the the word, so the, the the beautiful the beautiful understanding of the word is that God designates a certain status, a special status to this thing called a human being, that no other creature or no no other nefesh creature has, and that's what makes it very special. So and this actually has good ethical implications for the the abortion debate because if you do go down the the free will and the intellectual like if if image means intellect free will and so on then the pro choices those who who you know argue for a pro choice in the abortion debate they technically have a foot in by saying ah but then there's there's the potential of having an intellect or potential for having free choices because the nervous Brother system man, has a Why are we talking about abortion? <laughs> I thought we were talking about dogs. No, I'm just, no, no, no. I'm just giving you a quick mm -hmm. summarization of the word image, what it means, because if you have a correct understanding of the original meaning of image, mm -hmm. then it, it's talking about status of this thing regardless mm -hmm. of but, but correct what it image is. According to say Near Eastern studies, uh, according to the scholars, but this is yes. about a particular tradition. I'm speaking about these dog worshippers and their tradition, right? Yeah, so yeah. So, so, say, so in other words, yeah. yeah. So bring it to bring it to the dog. So yeah. the dog is not uh, behaving in the as a reflection of its creator. Rather, no, the but dog. You're, you're imposing your tradition onto them, right? Like. A, Oh, or sorry, no, 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 we're we're we're, we're yeah. translating we're or translating speaking, accurately yeah. what yeah with the same terminology. So the ancient Near Eastern understanding of the word. So in other words, I'm I'm interested in the original meaning, not what tradition has come to think that it means. So yeah, I know, but you're getting your actual meaning from 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 this. I'm saying they don't care about how you interpret uh, this. They already have yeah, their own 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 no, but if, if but if we're paralleling if we're paralleling the analogy to what actually happened in the past, that's part that should be part of the parallel. So yeah, I know. Well, okay, so when they say 
remember there are various interpretations for it means to be created in God's image, right? They have their own understanding of it, that to be created in, in God's image uh, is simply, God looks like a dog. Just leave it like that. This is what they believe. I don't agree with it personally. Ah, oh, but then I would disagree with that as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. then they don't care about your understanding. Oh, then 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 that doesn't. But then that that thought experiment and that parallel doesn't mm -hmm. actually work with the Old Testament. I know, but then remember, your understanding doesn't um, work with many other denominations either. Right. No, um, wait, no. I'm, I'm actually intrigued by this. So why is it relevant that we talk about what image uh, yeah, means? Yeah, exactly. Like, because so, the point is at the yeah. end, we're trying to figure out how it would be impossible for um, the one who claims, you know, there's two natures in that in that dog or whatever, the well, divine and the dog just, nature. But I'll, and in I'll, the end, yeah. would be, how would we claim it would be impossible, right? Yeah, so, but if uh, if we were to take the dog i don't know the dog culture or whatever and apply what actually happened in ancient years in history and and thinking so then this would this would be the the case if no, it says the, let us make same. the dog in our image then literally it's saying yeah. the dog has a special status that supersedes all other creatures regardless of its position and and just to let you guys know i'm i'm an evolutionist so i i believe humans come from evolution so this again has further implication that the dog regardless of its evolutionary cladistics and phylogeny um, no problem let's is, let's take that as a definition can you can you just deal with the question without talking about your own beliefs is it possible uh, no, no, but, but, but uh, the, even, but even the thought experiment mind. is just but the thought experiment is about my own beliefs you stepping no, no, into the no, shoes just, of a christian forget forget about the analogy for just deal with it like deal with Make an internal critic of dogism. So yeah, so Robert, like, let's just give that definition that you just gave for what it means to you know be created in the image of God, and then let's move on to the point, which is you know what the brother asked, right? Yeah. So image means status, in a nutshell. Sure. It, ha it has nothing to do with ability. Sure, no problem. So l let's continue and see what your answer is to like the main point of the argument. So what do you want me to clarify now that I've clarified that? Okay. Uh, HK's... Yeah, 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 so you are minding your own business and you see somebody with a bone on his collar, like like it's his religious symbol. And what is that? And he said he worships a dog god. Basically, I'm like, I don't know if I'm still like... Just slightly breaking yeah. up. Like a, it's a dog that does dog-like things and can't help it. Remember, this is just in his dog nature. This is a to to Vincent as well. The reason why I was talking about the chair and if God is incapable of doing X or Y thing, then is he still God? You said no, he cannot be God. That was my entire point. If someone is hungry and they depend on something, for example, they depend on food even in their human nature or their dog nature, whatever it may be, then they cannot be God, right? Just as if so, he had the inability yeah. to change that. So and that's the reason why I brought it up. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. so this is yeah. this is interesting. So I come across someone who has a dog bone, uh, you know, on the, on the chain. And then I ask, so you're basically saying it's equivalent to say a Christian who has maybe a cross on a chain. And, mm -hmm. and but like, um, how can... Uh, like, would you be able to tell this person that their God is not worthy of worship? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so then in my conversation, it's not just all about, um, because I, what I would do is I'd, I'd also say, hey, look, there's, you know, I also believe in the incarnation and it's, but it's a human being, whereas you believe the incarnation was, it's a dog. Uh, where I would go with that is actually a, a massive wholesale and i'm not i'm not i'm being serious here when i say this i would have to go through a very extensive ancient near eastern historical analysis all the way through old testament history then finally the second temple context and then finally in the first century as a comparison to the so-called dog religion like i i, I want to know 
the big picture, like this dog god of yours, did he, what did he do with the last 13.8 billion years of universal history? What did he do with humans migrating into the Persian Gulf? What did he do with humans? Uh, oh, sorry, when I say humans, I mean dogs. Like, yeah. what what were dogs mean, doing culturally like... speaking and so on? That then he has to take into account the other gods. What did the other gods do with respect to this dog god? And why did he incarnate ultimately? Is it to cause theosis to dogs and glorification to dogs? Like, I, 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 I would go through all those details. Person, in, in a drug mart or, or whatever, I just met him in a grocery store and he tells me he worships this being. I would ask him, okay, well, is he all powerful? Is he all knowing? And if they respond in his God nature, I would say, what do you mean? Well, he's self sufficient, except for the times where his owner takes him out for walks or fills his water bowl or, um, you know, feeds him his dog food. And I would think, okay, well, is he dependent in that moment or is he independent? Well, he's dependent. And then I would think, okay, well, I believe I see God as independent, self sufficient at all points. So if if he depends on another being, then I don't believe that this uh, can ever be God. Simply put, right? If he does something I believe is not befitting the majesty of God, for example, chasing his tail for, out of enjoyment or, or pooping on the, the neighbor's lawn, I, I, I don't, as a Muslim, I don't have to chalk it up and say, well, it's in the nature of a dog to do this. But in his God nature, he walked on water, so everything's cool now. Right. Whenever I yeah. see a limitation, whenever I see a limitation in any of his or its abilities, then I would simply say, well, this can't be godlike. So I'm curious about how and how a Christian can ever answer a question like this, because yeah. they can default yeah, yeah, yeah. to the same. No, I get you. Yeah, I, yeah, I get your yeah. point. I, it's and that's an it's an interesting point. But again, so for example, when you're using terms like is God independent and, you know, like you're going in, into a more philosophical, semantic argument. Now, say if this person granted everything that I would say about the Christian God, um, the the only thing that I'd require is a demonstration that, that this actually happened in history and, again, going through that extensive big picture scenario of, okay, this God dog, uh, this 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 dog god or whatever what does he do in salvation history how does he uh, uh, work with the last 13.8 billion years of universal history how does he work with the theology that starts to emerge does he in other words does he have a corpus does he have a, a text that summarizes the, the entire you know what makes this a rational belief um why did this god incarnate in the dog Regardless of what's taking place in in what you would call it a, a limitation, like you know chasing its tail and so on, because any of the theophanic appearances of God, even in the Christian Bible, involves what Christians call kenosis and emptying, and the ultimate kenosis mm -hmm. is in Jesus. Yeah. So um, say if some yeah. if this group of people of worshippers had a stronger historical tradition. Right, and they had say more evidences, uh, whether it be uh, textually or remnants of certain things that date back to say prophets of certain times and prophecies came true. Would you be more inclined to believe in it than Christianity? Yeah. Or... Also, to to add to that, a uh, HK is um, Robert. It seems from what I got from you from your response is that um uh you would merely depend on the historicity of the uh that claim right and when you said rational you didn't mean it in terms of logical um positions or theological positions you're because that if they if they um if they accepted every you know a parallel of every belief that the christian holds you say their view is logical, is that what you said? But rational in terms of um, the historic and the historical um, validity of the claim. Yeah, I so coming from a, I'm I'm in astronomy and astrophysics. So my my psych, the way my mind works is such that I'm not a philosopher. I'm more in into the empirical data. 
Now, right. this this analogy actually works very well in, again, what the patristics call the principle of plenitude, and that is, what if there's alien life elsewhere in the universe? Does God have to do this sort of thing to other aliens? So to, so to sort of like transfer the, the dog analogy to, say, an ET entity, well, there you go. Right, God right. would have to incarnate into an ET to, and then die and, you know, do all that stuff. Is that, is that a necessary... Uh, a, and, and what would happen if you if we did come across an alien civilization and in this case muslims you communicate islamic theology and then christians communicate christian theology like how would they react to that theology and vice versa how would we react to that theology uh this is this is an age-old question um the christian response culminated in the fact that well according to the bible if god incarnates this one time and this is in colossians 1 if God incarnates, incarnates in this one time and only the person of Christ, the interesting thing is, is that he's able to affect the whole cosmos, the whole universe, through this one act. So whatever, in other words, whatever, if there's potential alien life outside, or like a dog, sentient dog life outside somewhere, kind of like Planet of the Apes, you know, sentient apes in some other planet, then um, God and his wisdom can somehow affect them through this salvation process, even though he may not need to incarnate as an ape or as a dog or as an alien. Robert, um, but what I'm saying is, in in conclusion, you're just. It seems that you're concluding. You know, it's possible for for it to be a dog or a cat or you know, an ant even, right? For God to incarnate to it, if they hold the same or you know a parallel view of your positions as a Christian. So long as the, you know, the historical validity is matched along with Christianity, I is would that say, what you're saying? So if we're to say that there's an God incarnated into an ant, right? To keep it simple, with two natures, divine nature and an ant nature, this is absolutely logical to believe in for you. Yeah, it it has to be because I'm because. Uh, the Bible makes no distinction between human beings and animals because human beings, and, and this works with evolution, human beings are by, by default animals. We have, we're just a higher order hominid species, but the fact is we come from the last universal common ancestor, Luca. So uh, the, Then I think yeah. this, this, the question that HK can be just answered like that, right? that HK is, their answer is basically that they don't believe it's impossible. So they wouldn't argue against it as long as the as historical matches along their, the side. Uh, of yeah. As so this in, in the beginning, in the beginning and was the word, and the word was the bird, and the bird was the dinosaur. Allah, Allah. Look at this. <laughs> so, so I think this, this is why Vincent wanted to pass the microphone. I'm, I'm very curious. So by the way, HK, I put well. just quickly. I put in the room yeah, chat yeah, the link. Right. Yeah, so that this is this has already been engaged with in the early church. Like, what if what did God have to incarnate into ET life if the if ET life exists? And theologians have engaged this, and um, yeah, it's this is it's an interesting question, but it's not new. Robert, but can you can you say um, this is my question for you? Then, if that's your answer, right? That it is logical to believe that an ant, God could incarnate to an ant, right? Um, my question would be, can something be illogical, right? And I'm not presupposing or anything or making an argument against your belief right now, but if something is illogical, it cannot be historical. You agree with that? Like, um, premise? You mean if something can be illogical, it cannot be historical? No, no. If, if it's some, if something is illogical, then it cannot be historical. Because it yeah, cannot, but it again, cannot be illogical, illogical... Yeah, but logical, that in itself is such a granular, you know... A logical meaning that it's, you know, it, it either leads to a contradiction in identity or and it violates the law of non-contradiction or any other laws that yeah, are but then that, essential to the Those things fall reality. apart when you go, say, into quantum mechanical effects and, like, again, philosophy no, breaks down even at the scientific level on many phenomena in the universe.
So no, my, my just 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 to just to summarize th this analogy, I like the analogy. Just to summarize this analogy, yes, I would believe if God did incarnate into an ant, I would have to believe it on the basis of the fact that the question was raised in regards to ET, extraterrestrial life. But well, but, but wait 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 wait, no, wait but but, but yeah. the fact is according to. Again, these same people that raised that question, they, they at the same time were constrained to the biblical text that says God chose to only incarnate into humans, and that's Hebrews 2. And in that process, he is, he is still... They don't believe is the point. No, right? no, like no, when... this, no. Just let me I'm finish. Just the, the let, me just, let, let me just let me let me finish. The dog believes it, when you say, let, well, in the Bible it says that. Wait, let me, let me finish. I'll, I'll finish my point. So in Hebrews 2 and Colossians 1, you have the, um, the room to include E.T. And so if I came across alien life, which is no different to sentient ant life or dog life or whatever, I would have to share with them that according to my theology, God incarnated into human form and was able to affect resurrection life to the whole cosmos just through this one act. Now... If you have a religion, what is your religion? And then that's only only then would the dialogue continue. But until then, I'm constrained to the biblical text. Robert, okay. Robert, uh, HK, hold on, Robert. Um, that does not answer my question, right? So, firstly, because I think you, you didn't agree with the premise. Uh, do you believe in the essential nature of logic? I believe in the what? The essential nature of logic. The essential nature. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go into philosophical discussion, like I would be, I think Vincent would be better to talk to you about that. For me, I'm more. No, 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 no. I'm saying no because your position is that um, something is historical, then you should believe in it. But if we grant that logic is supreme above above history because, you know, logic is prior to history, since if something is illogical and impossible to happen, then it cannot be an event in history, right? So if we're to if we're to make an argument against the Trinity, right, where we um, break down how the Trinity is an impossible theology, it's it's a contradiction in terms where um, it collapses God, right? Um, or the Chayim got a collapse. Well, China, what about then if you we can't grant Christianity? Yeah, if if you're gonna talk about, you know, logical identities and so on, prior to the Big Bang, it all collapses at this space time. You know, just before no. the Planck epoch, you can't. Like, the, if the I was to if, if I was to steel yeah. man that statement, I would say, look, you and I are both in a conundrum prior to the Planck epoch. No. Because even like you, you're literally saying b before space and time, right? First, this is um, this is a difference in philosophy. There's arguments for the beginning of time. I think it's illogical to believe that time begins. That's my position. However, there's a difference between um, those who ascribe to philosophy or those you know who make arguments that say there's a beginning to time, there's a beginning to space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? All of this are arguments, there, there's arguments that can be made for them or in opposition to them. So you saying that there's, you know, um, there's a law of identity collapses before that, it's not true. Because if we can, I could make an argument, for example, for the ascent. First, firstly, Robert, you agreed with the essential nature of logic, right? That means it is... Uh, and it's, it's, it's essential and necessary, right? Just as you say God is necessary, you have to posit that logic is necessary, right? Whether you believe this is separate Yeah, because from he God. exists prior to the Planck epoch. No, 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 I'm saying, no, I'm saying because you said, you said that uh, logic is essential and necessary. This means just like God, right? That logic that you're talking about is also necessary. Now you could posit that you could ground that logic. Yeah, but that just to clarify, that's that, just to clarify, no. that's if the universe, even if the universe didn't exist, but God exists, that's then that's still a possibility. In other words, I'm agreeing What's with you on that. What's the possibility? What's the possibility that logic exists 
Um, no, you said it's essential, meaning it's necessary. It's not a possibility. Okay, then. Okay, I'll 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 refrain from the usage of the word possible because when I say possible, I'm speaking uh, as a scientist. So I'm speaking as probabilities, okay, like high, like a high enough probability that that's the case. No, but anyway, that this thing, we might be speaking past one on, one each other. So um, yeah. So when you're yeah. saying probability, that trumps that because this is not a matter of um, probability or um, probability. It's a matter of necessary. Yeah, you're, necessary. you're talking to a non-philosopher. Yeah, so I don't. No problem. Yeah. No problem. No. Yeah. So I'm trying to. I'm just trying to make you understand some terms, right? Because probability means there's a possible. You know, there's a possible conception where you could say this fails. But when you say something is, is is essential and necessary, then there is no possible world where sure, this sure. fails, right? Yeah. So logic is essential in itself. Um, whether you ground it in God or extern to God is up to you, right? Uh, that's again, that's a difference of opinion. Um, but what I'm trying to get here is, if we were to basically refute the the conception of Trinity, or at least your um, consen conception of the uh, chiriology, then this would force you to like uh, shift your position right? and hold another position, either another conception of chiriality or Unitarianism or something else, right? Mm -hmm. But if we were to collapse your theology, I mean, we could go on about it, but if we were to do that, then history would not be able to support you because your theology is corrupt it's impossible to to occur in history would you agree with that yeah come on so do, do you think i could you know maybe because you said you're not a philosopher so i tried to keep it in simple terms but uh would you would you be willing to go uh through a line of reasoning with me uh, sure. Just, just give me a moment. I'll go make some coffee. All right. Yeah, one second. If you guys want to talk to Vincent, go for it. I, I just, I'm trying to understand the, the claim that was made earlier that the Bible doesn't differentiate humans from other sentient beings. So, you know, obviously, to me, that would have certain implications regarding the crucifixion. Because the, the the usual Christian argument is, oh, well, you know, the Jews historically had to slaughter like a ram. And then all of a sudden we, we, we had to sacrifice, you know, um, you know, Jesus had to lay down his life and, and sacrifice himself for humanity. So obviously, I, I guess what I would like to know is if the Christian view is that if a ram was, you know, um, God incarnate, then would this suffice? And then also with the the idea of like the human form dying on the cross, um, yeah, obviously this this creates some confusion for me uh, in understanding the Christian narrative on on the crucifixion. If it if the case is that you know all sentient beings are the same in uh, in a sense. Yeah, I'll just quickly answer this, then I'll go make some coffee. Um, again, very good question, but at the same time, um, the the passage in Hebrews two is very specific. So, in verse five, it mentions that the coming world is not for the angels, and then the obvious question is, well, why? In in what sense? So then the author quotes Psalm eight, and in Psalm eight, David is saying. What is man that you should take notice of him? And because when I look at the universe, look how grand it is and how, how tiny we are. In fact, we are made lower than the Elohim. We are made lower than the divine beings. And the Satushan says angels, but, but basically we are not spiritual beings. But, but at the same time, David then says, Ah, but you've still given the human species um, the privilege of being able to maintain an order on creation like in other words you've granted them authority to govern the earth and to govern the animals and so on so in the ancient hebrew mindset there's this interesting perception that yes we're no different to the animals because both the animals and the humans are made lower than spiritual beings 
but at the same time you've given us a status that designates us as different to the animals and that comes to, back to the whole image scenario so with the ram you know the the sacrificial lamb and and jesus uh so you're talking about ontological characterizations so if god chooses to incarnate into a human body and as an evolutionist i have to take into account that that human body is stardust which technically then has connections to other potential life forms like like a lamb and a dog and so on but what makes it even that much more special is that if there's a genuine hypostasis between God's divine nature and the human body, then he is specifically transforming only the human body up to his level. Yes, the other, you know, yes, the rest of creation can, can join in that resurrection life, but there's a special unique relationship between God and then the human being, rather than if he were to do it to a dog or an alien or a, or a lamb, then he would have to maintain a special relationship with only those creatures. Um, so, so that's so. So this comes back full circle to why it's called the gospel, why it's called good news, because God, in His love, chose you and I out of all the creatures to incarnate into to then save you and I and have direct fellowship with you and I, not a lamb or a ram or a or an alien. Or even an angel, because the text says he didn't choose to to save the angels. All right, this I'll is be, a, I'll a be right back. HK? HK, are you there? Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not you know Robert, if you want to go make some coffee, go right ahead. Uh, it's just I I'm still kind of um, perplexed as to because obviously the. Christians would not say that you know the obviously you can't um you can't distinguish or you can't separate the divine form from the human form but I think it would be kind of blasphemous to say that Jesus divine form died on the cross no oh yes or, yeah or no I'm not yeah 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 I'm not saying so God so what I'm saying is like the body does yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so yeah. what I'm saying is like uh, why like it, it's possible that like hypothetically speaking we could have kept on just sacrificing lambs that's that's completely like that could also have sufficed for the sins of humanity ah hypothetically speaking. ah yeah but but if you think but notice god himself later later on in the prophets like hosea and so on says that you guys don't get it lamb sacrifices were an ancient near eastern superstition that has that can't suffice for atonement because lambs at the end of the day are localized uh creatures they you know there's no in other words they don't have any relationship to you and i um past present or future you need god who comes from outside the system to not only be omnipresent but omniscient and omnipotent to have in that hypostasis it, the, the, the issue, yeah, the, issue is, saying, the, the, the issue is death he could have the, been the he issue. could have he could sorry sorry he could have been inside of that lamb right he could have like yes a, yes he could have that form. he could have but then he would only be causing theosis or glorification to only the lambs if he did that oh okay okay the, yeah, yeah. The, now i'm following yes so if, so if he chose you and if he chose the human being then Hence, John 3.16, for God to love the world, and in what sense? He's specifically choosing the human creature out of all other creatures because he loves the human creature. Or he's made, bro, again, he's made a, a, again, you he's have made a choice to do that. HK's theology, bro. The creed of dogism is still on the table. Uh, you're just using circular reasoning at this point. It's just getting annoying. All right, anyway, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go make some coffee one sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, 